um, buying a house only for its beauty is just like marrying a wife only, uh, sorry, buying a house only for its paint is just like uh, mar marrying a wife only for her beauty. So this is the same for cyber security. Don't think that it's at the end I can paint this and it will look good. Look at the bases, look at building cyber security from the beginning. Make sure that you have it at the beginning, not at the end of the project. Partnering with, uh, I believe uh, that all industrial automation companies realize the need for industrial cyber security. And most of them, and the majority, they are doing a great work in improving industrial cyber security. However, we need to remind companies that uh, you need to build your own strategy. You need to build your own uh, infrastructure and you need to build your way into how you are going to secure those control systems. Because if you go to a vendor and you tell him, I want you to provide me with security, he's going to provide you with security solution. B vendor will provide you with another one. C vendor will provide you with the third one. And then you'll end up with different types of security solutions and you need an army to operate this security. And then they will fail to operate security and you will end up with disabling security in those plants. So you need to think, how am I going to, 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 to secure those center, uh, systems and to operate security within the coming 20 years? And how can I make it easy for the people to operate? And who's going to be responsible about securing the plants? And we recommend that we develop the capabilities of the control system engineers in the plants so that they will handle cyber security. I'm not against IT here, and I'm not against IT people. But understand the plant rather than the control system engineer who's in the plant. And he's the guy who knows that I can implement this security, I can do this change, I can restart this machine, or I cannot do that. So we need to develop the capabilities of our control system engineers, and at the same time, we need to narrow the, 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 the gap between the IT and OT people. This is a brief, and tomorrow I'm going to be having a workshop for five, six hours talking about uh, building cybersecurity by design and uh, implementing uh, cybersecurity within a digital oil field. And I'll go in more details about this, but I think as, uh, a, a, as a keynote speaker, I think that, that, that uh, maybe this could be enough. May we will have a questions right now. So I'm sure that, uh, that we'll have a number of questions. And go ahead, if you want to go in automation, ask me about automation. If you want to go in IT security, ask me, don't worry. So uh, if we have a mixture of people, feel free to, uh, to ask uh, in, in all aspects of the uh, control systems and cybersecurity. Uh, Kuwait has done multiple projects on, uh, on, on, on doing test bids for digital oil fields. And let me say that, uh, that uh, we have been moving in the world, in everywhere in the world talking about digital oil fields, security. Let me say that what has been done in Kuwait here uh, has helped lots of countries in the world, has helped lots of oil companies to understand digital oil fields and what could be helpful and how to implement this. So also we need to thank uh, KOC for the huge efforts that, re that they really um, um, uh, went through in order to improve digital oil field concept in the world. Now, some people asked me, they said, why don't we then say that we have a digital oil field? I'll tell you, go to Shell plan, go to BB plan, and you will find that BB is talking about 20 years plan for implementing digital oil fields, okay? So this doesn't mean that we are failing in implementing digital oil fields. This doesn't mean that, that we are not successful. No, we have, uh, as Kuwait, Kuwait has done huge efforts to help the, 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 the world and oil companies in improving the understanding of digital oil fields but with, by what they have done. And thanks to KOC for this work. Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Project Management Engineer, North Kuwait, KOC. بالنسبه لل راح نتكلم بالانجليزي انا. Regarding the visibility study, to make any uh, control uh, uh, control system is going to cost you money. Uh, 
That, that's money. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that's going to cost you a lot of money. Okay. Oh. Some companies they cover this by insurances. Okay. Okay. By security insurances, especially in the U.S. I don't know about Kuwait or the Gulf area. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they cover this by insurance, which is cheaper. And visibility study is going to be cheaper for you. How do you do? We, how can we implement the system while there is another backup? Things like insurances like this. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Insurance. I ha we have been talking about uh, about finding out companies that will provide us with insurance on our oil fields from cyber attacks. Okay, and I know little companies in the world they that can provide you with this insurance. Why? Uh, we have been in Sacramento last uh, in, uh, last year, and we were discussing even about certification, saying that I have a certified control system. On from the, and it's certified from cyber attacks. Let me say that there is no way to certify any system, and I can I can go into a deep discussion with this uh, on this. No way to certify any system to say that this system is certified and it is uh, rigid of cyber attacks. What we can say is that this system is certified against those tests that have been done on this system on this date only. SSL has been, uh, and you know about heart bleed, right? We have been using secure protocol, and then we found out that the secure protocol is not secure. So no way to certify now uh, any system to say that it's fully certified. However, now when we talk about uh, uh, money that we need to implement cyber security, uh, you, what if you implement, for example, um, SIM solution or uh, uh, logging me capabilities to take information from, from your control systems? I don't want to go deep and to talk, for example, for those who work in control systems, when you go to level three switch, the main switch, and you collect information from that switch, from the higher level of, of, of your control system, you will be able to know about lots of information happening within your control system. What's the cost? It's not big cost. The problem is that this, uh, uh, is that how you design security and you, mm, to design security for the control system you need people who understand automation systems and they understand security but say that first they have to understand automation systems and the cost for implementing cyber security if it's a new project I don't want to talk about implementing cyber security in uh, digital oil fields and uh, uh, I have experience in the, the cyber security and a digital oil field and because the implementation was on the first stages uh, let me say that for example if it costed two million dollars for implementing cyber security it costed some other companies around 30 or 40 million dollars to implement it when they passed the hardware and software freeze fa phases why because everything becomes as uh, change order by the automation vendors. And when they go ask you for a change order, you are going to pay 10 times of what, what you should pay. So I go into discussion and who can be tomorrow in the workshop. I'll discuss this and I'll show how implementing cyber security is not that much expensive, but you need to understand what level of security I can implement and what are the solutions that I can implement to provide me with enough cyber information about what's happening in my plant so it's not that much but relying only on um, uh, on insurance companies i for sure i'm not going to, uh, to to we will go for insurance but we have human lives that we are responsible responsible about there are attacks real, real attacks that have taken place in the world in the last three months in isa 99 and we, we with, with the groups with the discussions we heard about explosions taking place in areas and there were fatalities because of and it has been found that this was a cyber attack you can go to uh, to the explosion that took place in uh, turkey in 2008 that explosion was, was rated as incident. Only two months back, they rated the explosion as cyber attack. 
Why? Because they analyzed the systems and they analyzed it for the threats and they discovered threats that were not discovered at that time. So you need to implement cybersecurity. We do not, we, we need, we might need the insurance, but we need to make sure that we have the real cybersecurity level within the plants. Because we are responsible about our people, about the critical infrastructure, about the environment, about the lives of those people. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be with and hope to see you in the workshop tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Eamon. Thank you. Thank you. And as a reminder, Eamon does in fact have a workshop he's facilitating tomorrow. It commences at 9 a.m. at the Bourjan Room at the hotel. And if you do want to register, please speak to our beautiful team at the registration desk. Seats are limited, so make sure you do go in there very quickly. Now, it's with my absolute pleasure to introduce now our next keynote speaker for the day. With over 25 years of experience with KNPC's IT intellectual department across various departments, currently he's the IT manager. He'll be discussing the subject of KNPC's journey towards securing industrial automation and control systems. It's with my absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage, let's give him a very big warm welcome, Mr. Abdelaziz Ahmad Daesh. Welcome. Shukran. Shukran. I'm very grateful to be here. I'm also very happy to see all this good audience, good people who are coming all the way to learn something, especially in the area that everybody is focusing on, which is the cyber security. And not any cyber security we're talking about, specifically to the oil and gas industrial facilities. This is what we wanted to be. Focus, specialize on a certain area with very nice high-tech speakers so that we can learn a lot. In the name of KMPC, I would like to welcome you here. My presentation, my presentation here is only to summarize what we have gone through as a journey in the cybersecurity in KNPC and this event is one of our awareness campaigns to our people. Whatever we're going to discuss, whatever we are presenting here, it will be put on clips and then to be published to all KMBC users so that they can get the message well. So, so it is a journey in KMBC security. I would like to take you back and where we are as KMPC. KMPC is, a subsidiary, is, a, is one of KBC company, as you can see. We are focusing and specializing in refining. And we have our sister companies here. And also KBC. We have our companies also outside Kuwait. This is uh, just to know where we are. And this event, the chaos, it was being hosted last year by one of our sister company. This year by KMBC. Hopefully next year will be hosted by KOC, our another sister company. This is KMBC head office. This is our refineries that we take care of. And this is the capacity of uh, oil refining. In KNPC, we have three major refineries, and the fourth one is coming with Azor with a capacity of total capacity 1.6 million barrel. Uh, so it's really important to know each other. It's really important to know who is the speaker. Why? Because this is give the credential for the information that I'm giving to you. We are really into this field, and I'm sure all of you are very IT-centric, very specialized in IT, and it is really important because whatever we're talking about, it is all about IT, about computer, and about software. So I'm an IT manager in Kuwait National Petroleum Company, and as you can see, I graduated from University of Pacific in California 
88 in BS Computer Engineering, and also in KMBC for 27 years in IT department, also uh, participant in Kuwait e-government committee and Kuwait IT society. So we are very much into the same field of IT and how security evolved. So always there is a beginning, and this is the beginning of KMBC. It goes back into 1948 in our early refining. This is Mina Ahmadi refinery back in 40s. And this is also early gas stations in Kuwait. So the journey also started nearly in mid 70s. KMPC were very honored to announce that we are early adopters of IT back in 70s because we are also focusing on the technology of refining and this is requires to be always on the leading edge of technology and at that time we use different facilities different services different computer systems to assist us doing our business job as refining and everything was smooth but what happened in 1993 introduction of internet this is the connectivity of everybody together. This is what really kept us in our toes since then. Because at that time, this is where have our mindset ahead of its time. And this is what, when the security really evolved or started to be a worry for us in 1993. So we were first adapters to have ISO certification in information security management and uh, also we are in line to go with ISA 99 industrial automation control system security standards and we are have done the first exercise and there is also a journey for ISA 99 to secure us in the industrial area this is a great challenge For us, the dimensions we focus on is really on three levels. People, process, technology. So what we did with people, definitely we always focus on training, assessment, awareness campaign, and this is also part of the awareness campaign for our audience. Process, as you can see, control and safeguarding policies, guidelines, technology. Most of our time we spend thinking of technology. Technology, it is very essential, but it's not everything to secure your organization. Yes, we are doing our best, but still the game is on. So we need to always focus on how we can be updated in these three levels. I don't want to say only awareness, I don't want to say technology, even the process. You have to be very well organized with nice policies and nice guidelines. For us, we have done the exercise in doing, having the latest hardware, software solutions to protect our assets in KMPC. But this is first stage. This, the, first, the second stage is to go and focus on my people in KMPC. We are about 6,000 uh, employees. With the contractors, we go up to 10,000. So this is also a very key stone for us to protect our uh, infrastructure is to go talk to them and also to raise their awareness into the IT security. And we have gone through many different awareness campaigns and SAHI is one of uh, these events and I'm going to show you also the clips that we have done. So when we introduced him, it was a full campaign when we had a 12 series, video cartoon series, and uh, screensavers up to nearly uh, 5,000 uh, uh, PCs being published. 
an online test. Also, we have done penetration and online test for with all our users and public surveys that we had nearly 11,000 participants in our surveys. So this is one which we feel is very important to protect our insiders. So the challenges that we are always facing in the industrial, as industrial uh, user is the change. Always people in the oil sector are very sitting in the comfort zone. They know the, the, the way to run the refinery, they have been doing the same process for the last 50, 70 years, easily, safe, and also available. But now something has changed. And this change always was a big... Uh, pe people are resisting the change. Why? Because they always tell us availability is, is very important for us. We don't want to have any disturbance in our uh, line of business. So this is the challenge that we are facing. So we have to find other ways to overcome these challenges. And we did, the, we did that. So the challenge was to, to bridge, to close the gap between IT and our industrial core business. It is a gap. It has been inherently there for tens of uh, years. And it is the time that we have to close it because without the business users, we cannot be secure. We cannot secure our infrastructure and we would be vulnerable for any such attack. So this is the challenge that we are always facing. The only way for a better security is through willingness to change and adopt. And this message has been communicated to every individual in KMBC. Definitely we had done, in IT department, we created a very sophisticated, specialized, dedicated IT security division so that it will look for security aspects all the time. Also, the best thing, we got the top management commitment. For me, I cannot go and fight with a business user to implement such. It has to be done with the commitment of top management, and this is, يعني, thanks, we had got this commitment. And this is the CEO. It's always the challenge between the corporate and the refineries, the business users. We are there in IT, and these are the, all the corporate users that we have. And we are, as you can see, there is, there is I would say, a China wall between us. There is a, a brick wall between the IT and the users. And it was a challenge for us to, to break this wall so that we can communicate easily and communicate our message to our people. And alhamdulillah, thanks God, we did this one very well in the last couple of years. So what's the future? Definitely a journey has to start and it has to also to have a plan for the future. So our future is really in many different aspects, but we focus on standards. We focus on practice, uh, best practices around the world. So we have to maintain the ISO 27001 and also to go heavily on ISO 99 standard Definitely cloud and mobility is the challenge for us for the future and how we can even secure us. So this is a nice uh, clip. <laughs>
بيست وانا غير الباسورد وانساه كذي هو قدامي ما راح انساه موليه اخوي باسورداتك لك بروحك ودير بالك احد غيرك يعرفها كن حريص كلمات المرور تخصك انت وحدك ويحظر افشاؤها او اظهارها للغير ابو حمود شنو اخبار صفقه ال دير بالك من الهندسه الاجتماعيه هذيلا ممكن يكونون ناس غايتهم يسحبون المعلومات منك بحسن نيه ممكن يكلمونك بالديوانيه بالكافيه بريدك الالكتروني بالدردشة على النت او باي طريقة اتصال لا تعطيهم معلومات الشركة وانت عارف انها سرية الحرص واجب حذاري من اصحاب الغايات المبيتة فوسائل خداعهم عديدة للحصول منك على معلومات حساسة ويتواصلون معك اجتماعيا من خلال وسائل عديدة So this is a brief of what we are doing in KMPC as a journey. It's always ongoing journey. There is no stop. And the challenges is always building up. And maybe, as you can see, the easy part for all of us is to focus on technology. What's really difficult is to handle your people, the mentalities, the different type of people, and, dif and the challenges of reaching 10,000 people with the same, uh, with different mindsets. This is the challenge that we are always facing. And the only way we can do it is to go these type of uh, campaigns. And not even in addition to that, we are going to have them even part of their yearly objectives so that they can adhere to the international standard in IT security. And I would like to thank you one more time for your staying here and also we are always here to learn more if there is any such opportunity to enhance our security against such attack. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Now our third speaker for the day, speaking on the subject of human factor dynamics in cybersecurity. Now, Dr. Safa Zaman received her BS and MS from Kuwait University in 1999 and in 2004, and her PhD in computer engineering from the Waterloo University in 2009. She currently holds the Assistant Professor, professor of Information Science in Kuwait University. Let's give her, please, a very big warm welcome, Dr. Safa Zaman. Thank you for thank being you. with us. Thank you, thank you, Adults. thank you. Thank you for, I mean, coming today. Uh, I am from Kuwait University. I will present today about a human factor dynamic in uh, cyber sec security. Many thanks for my assistant uh, engineer, Ahmed uh, Safar. Uh, at the beginning, I mean, this is a brief description about my presentation. I will take you to brief introduction, then describing a human factor. After that, I will describe the five dimension uh, of a human factor, ending with uh, analysis and uh, recommendations. Uh, we will share this video with, uh, together to see uh, what a human can do in our security. Today, we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where'd you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. But, and so you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, 
6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh, my goodness. Um, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me, it's strong enough. Ireland, one, two, three, four. Gemma, one, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. Well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like so what, like... Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria is your password? Oh, yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Just for <laughs> clarification, this is not a comedy film. This is a real life. Um, now going, yeah. Just a brief description about the uh, cyber security, the motivation, how it's initiated. Cyber security starting from personal, uh, personal motivation and it's grown to end to national levels. It starts from curiosity. People want to know about what other people do. And by using small tools, scripts, getting or hackers, you, using, you know, simple tools. It's developed to be to to take revenge. They try to harm each other <coughs> by using an inner information, and uh, uh, you know they improve little bit their tools. Then they say that you know they see that this effort can use it to make money to get more money. So it's become you know become monetary gain. Uh, create a small groups, small organization to gain money through stealing people. Uh, after that, I